Hello and welcome to Linux Shell Scripting. Uh, my name is Ben. I'll be guiding you through a few simple shell scripts. This is part one of two parts. Uh, I'm going to start off by assuming that you know the commands cat and echo. The command cat, C-A-T, I'm just going to use that to display the contents of files that I'll be running today. All the files that I run have been written previously and uh, if you need to make a copy of them you can just pause the video and then write down uh, the commands. The other command that I'm going to be using is echo. All that does is print something to screen. So if I have a variable or a string, I, I can just print that. I'll give you a quick demo of that, like echo. In this case, I'm going to print the system variable bash uh, version. And then I can, I can see which version of bash I'm running. If you're running Windows, what you'll need to do is use a program similar to PuTTY, uh, PuTTY is available for free. It's spelled P-U-T-T-Y. You can download that and then once you have that program you'll want to open it and connect to a remote Linux computer. So you'll need uh, someone, maybe a friend or if you're at a university, they'll have a, a Linux computer available. You can connect to that remote system. You'll supply a username and password and then you'll get to uh, something like what I have here which is a, a terminal screen and you can put your commands in there. Another program that you might find useful is called WinSCP, so it's W-I-N-S-C-P. That's another free program that's available. It allows you to transfer files back and forth between uh, your Windows system and a remote Linux computer. Today I'm running on a uh, distribution called Ubuntu. Uh, it's a free operating system that uh, uses Linux, and so what I'm going to be uh, basing my uh, assumptions are that you either have access to a Linux computer and can run these commands or you're on Windows and you can uh, access a remote Linux computer. So to get started what I'm going to do is just a simple verification that I can write a shell script. What I'm going to do first is uh, set a string equal to a variable which in this case H-E-L-O I'm going to set that variable equal to the string welcome. And then the next line is going to be echo and then the variable name. So I've put a dollar sign in front of H-E-L-O to say I actually want to use that variable instead of setting it. So uh, just do a quick, I'm going to clear my screen and say echo, or sorry, I'm going to say hello equals welcome. And then I've set that variable, and I'm going to echo that variable to screen. So H E L O, and hit enter. So I've now got the output to screen as I wanted. And now what I'm going to say is I can run the same thing from a shell script. So I've written a bunch of scripts here, and I'm just going to show you the contents of this one called e example echo variable. In this file, uh, I've got a few things I'm going to explain first. The first line is uh, pound exclamation slash bin slash slash bash. What that is is it's telling uh, the user and the program what this file is. So this file is a bash shell script. The bash command lives in the bin directory. The next line is a, uh, another pound sign. All comments, all single line comments start with a pound sign. And then I've put some information here, the date that it was written, the author, and how to contact the author. So if you have uh, questions or complaints, you can know who to send them to. Next up, there's a multi-line comment, just to demonstrate how to do multi-line comments in shell scripts. And we've got a colon, a space, and a single quote. And then the next lines are just text, and so this is a multi-line comment. And then I close out that multi-line comment with another single quote. So I've got a single quote a single line comment and then a multi line comment here. Now we get to the main body of the program which is the same two lines that we issued on the uh, on the computer originally and that first line I'm gonna set the variable H-E-L-O, H-E-L-L-O -L -L in this case equal to a string and the string is welcome to this script. Once that variable is set the next line is echo and then the original uh, variable name. So when I run this I'm going to type B-A-S-H, bash, space, example, and then I hit tab there, and there's multiple options, so I have to specify echo variable. 
and I hit tab. So I've used tab completion uh, to get the file name and I type bash before that uh, to say what I want to do to this file. So I'm going to run this by hitting enter and when I do that I just get back a single line that says welcome to this script. So that's simply printing out the variable uh, string here that I've set using the command echo. So to review, originally we had uh, two lines that we did, something in the command line, and then we translated that into a shell script and then ran it using the bash command. The next thing I'm going to cover are called arguments. And so when I have a, a bash a shell script here, I can actually pass extra command, extra variables to it at runtime. So what that means is I'm going to use the bash and then the name of the file again, and I'm going to tell it some extra things. In this case, the number is 34 and 92, separated by spaces. How that's going to work out in the script is that I'm going to echo an, uh, a string, the name of, of script is dollar sign and the number zero. So dollar sign zero, that's uh, a reserve variable that gets uh, that is the value of the name of the script, obviously. And then the next two uh, lines echo the first argument is dollar sign one and dollar sign two. So those are just going to be the two things that we passed into this script. And then uh, finally, the number of arguments is dollar sign pound, and that's just going to tell you how many arguments were passed in. In this case, it should be two. So you could do this for any number of arguments. If you passed in ten things after the file name, then you'd have uh, set the variables dollar sign one, dollar sign two, all the way up to dollar sign ten. So we're going to run this command uh, in the in the terminal. I'm going to clear out my screen here, and I want to do uh, cat an example arguments just to show you the contents of this file uh, just as I, I was showing earlier and then I'm going to use the up arrow key to get back to my previous command and then type bash so bash so now I've got the bash and then the file name and then I'm going to supply 3 4 and 9 2 so I've got what the command is what file name I'm going to give it and then two arguments. So when I hit enter here, I'm going to get back that the name of the script is whatever it's named. And then the first argument is what I did here. And then the second argument is this one. And then there were two arguments. So that's how that works out. I would highly encourage, while I'm going over this tutorial, for you to actually try these commands uh, as they're written here. So I'm showing the contents of the file and the name of the file. And I highly suggest that you actually try these out by putting these uh, files on your on your Linux computer and try running them. That's the best way to learn. All right, now we get to the interesting part. All so far we've done is basically take uh, a list of commands and put them in a file and then run that file. And that's a, kind of a time saver in that if you're running sets of commands over and over, you can consolidate them into one one file, but the the power of automation comes in when you don't have to put all those commands in explicitly, you can use a loop. And so in this case, I'm going to show you what a, f a for loop does in, in a shell, in a terminal. And we'll clear out. And so the first thing I want to do, just type for, and then some variable name in a list. In this case, I'm going to use one, two, three. And then I'm going to do this, and done. Alright, so what I've got is the command for. If you've done any programming at all, this should be somewhat familiar. Uh, I'm going to do a for loop over this variable. The variable name in this case I've called INDX. You can call yours whatever you want, just be consistent later on. So I've got this variable, and it's going to iterate over these elements of the list. So I've got 1, 2, and 3 as my list. And then I stop, I do a line break with a semicolon there. My next line is do, echo, and then the variable name. So in this case, since it's index here, I have to use that same variable here. I'm just going to echo the value. And so I expect to get back the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and then I'm done with that, that for loop. So if I hit enter here, I get back 1, 2, and 3, just as you might expect. 
what I want to uh, show you next is that I can actually do uh, something uh, slightly more interesting. I can take uh, a for loop in a shell script and I could do exactly this same line but in this case I'm actually going to use something a little bit simpler. If I wanted to go from 1 to 10 you might have thought well I'll have to type 1 and then 2 and then 3 all the way up to 10 but no you can actually use this curly bracket and then one dot dot however high you're going in this case 10 and then close curly bracket and in this case my my loop index variable is the letter i and so when i print that string out i'm going to do dollar sign i so we'll see what that looks like uh, do bash and then example for loop right to screen so there i use again tab completion to get that and when I run this, I get back this is index 1 all the way through 10. So if we look at that example again. Alright, so here you can see we've taken advantage of the power of for loops to save ourselves some time in that what I could have done in order to get this specific output is type that command repeatedly with slight variations. So I'd type this is index and then 1 and hit enter and then I would do that again is index 2 and so on and I could do that 10 times but you can see this shell script right here has saved me uh, some time in that I can iterate from 1 to 10 very easily and the this has two uh, other advantages besides saving time in that it's very scalable I can take this from 1 to 100 just by adding an, a 0 there and print out from 1 to 100 very easily so it scales nicely and the other thing is for arbitrarily complex things like this isn't too bad but when you read this it tells you exactly what it's doing in a smaller space and so the idea is the same idea is conveyed more easily in, a, in less space so this four lines here accomplishes in this case ten lines of output so this notation is a bit more compact for documentation to tell the next person what you're doing. Alright, and again all I did to execute the contents of this file was just type bash and then the file name. The next thing that I want to go over is you don't have you're not restricted to just uh, numbers in your in your for loops. In this case I'm going to show uh, that you can iterate over a list of strings. So I'll do the contents of the file first. Right, uh, array, screen one, right. string. All right, and the first example here is that we're gonna iterate over a list of names. In this case, these are strings: Jennifer, Tanya, Anna, and Sadie. And we're just gonna print that variable to screen. So I expect to get back uh, four names here. So I did the up arrow key and then bash, and of course that's what I get. So the point of this was that you don't, you're not restricted to iterate just from 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 or whatever range of num numeric values. You can iterate over uh, a list of strings there. So the next example that I'll show is that you can iterate not only over a list, but actually an array. and so. If you have some programming experience, hopefully this is a bit more familiar. I'm just going to use up arrow and go back and change this to 2. So the contents of this file now are an array. And the array holds four strings, H-E-L, L-O, W-O-R, and L-D. So the array is denoted by these parentheses. And then I'm setting that array equal to a variable called sum strings. The for loop in this case is going to be iterating over the variable str and g. You can name that whatever you want it to be, but it has to be consistent down here. And then it's going to enumerate values in this list called sum strings. So to make sure that you understand this, is we've got for and then a space string in space dollar sign and then curly bracket sum strings, so the same variable I have up here, square bracket at square bracket curly bracket. So this is my way that I'm going to enumerate values from an array. And then I'm just going to print those again. 
All right, so we've got hello world there. Nice. And now the last example. We'll just see what this is here. So this is now a little bit more complex. You've got the command ls, which when we type ls the command prompt, we're going to get back a list of files and folders. So what this for loop is going to do is take the variable i in this case and uh, take all the elements from the list from ls. So ls returned a set of files and folders and i is just going to be indexed uh, over them and that, over those values and then what we're going to do with that is print the word item in front of each of these values. So when I run this we get the word item in front of each of the values that we would have gotten back from ls. So this is showing the, and this is demonstrating the concept that you can combine simple commands like echo and ls and for and do some nifty things with them. So this example itself may not be useful but this is just the idea that you can combine uh, simple commands to get uh, more complex behavior. So just to review we've got this ls and we've done four. Prior to that we did a, an array of strings and then we did uh, a set of a list of strings before that. Alright in the next program in the next uh, installment of this video we'll talk about how to run programs from within shell scripts. So stay tuned.